on to the black ships we have the black admiral hipper up first that goes right into playable the base issues of the ships are still there the skills don't fix it but it is arguably better than the admiral hipper which isn't saying much but it does help so black amagi previously i actually had this in good but unfortunately i'm gonna have to rank it now in playable i do like it but age is kind of killing it now a lot of other premiums have come out that are just straight up pushing it out of good it's still a fine ship but it might just continue aging poorly as time goes on so i i, I can't suggest it Black Amalfi, great to buy. This is the perfect upgrade for Italian cruisers of that tier. You get sonar and rapid reload instead of DFAA and precise aim. You already are incredibly precise in this ship, so you don't use those precise aims in general. And now you also have rapid reload to help gun those DDs down. And if they get a little bit too close, sonar to spot them, which is the perfect fix for the Italian cruisers. It's an incredibly strong ship. If you enjoy Italian cruiser lines, this is perfect. Pick it up, you will enjoy yourself. Black Bairn, for me, it's playable. It's just a minor change up in skills. It doesn't make it any more insane. So if you like the Bairn class, eh, you can get it. It'd be fun, but else, uh, I, eh, it's eh. Black Bismarck, I was undervaluing it. It wasn't good. Now, clearly in great to buy. It is a discount per se. Roma, absolute blast to play. More of a brawling style and compared to the Roma being more of a sniper. So if you want that and you want the best Bismarck class in this game, Pick it up. Black Bismarck is a blast to play. Black Chapayev. So actually, I was going to put it in playable, but Zslarus changed my mind on it. If you like the Chapayev class, it's in niche, and you might like it and might enjoy it. It's a different variant of it. You get rapid reload over it. I prefer the tech tree version because of the radar or another variant that has smoke, but overall, the Black Chapayev is there if you enjoy this Chappy class. Black Charles Martel, yeah, I wouldn't make the swap for these skills in a million years. It's collectors. It's a, it, it is still arguably playable, but to me, the regular Charles Martel is right there, and it's a perfectly fine ship. The Black Charles Martel actually, in my opinion, hurts it, so I would definitely not pick it up. And another one, one I missed when I was originally recording, the Black Colorado. Thank you once again to Romy for helping me out with this one. The Black Colorado goes into collectors. It is actually playable. But I'm going to put it in collectors only because it's a Colorado with an engine accelerator. Why? Why? Why would you even do that? It's just a stupid meme ship and just go get the West Virginia or just go get the regular Colorado. Black Dallas. I did have this in collectors. I will agree with everyone. The rapid reload on it helps it and puts it into playable. It, it's a fine ship. If you like the Dallas class, it's a better version of it. Black Edinburgh, it was a niche, stays a niche because it's literally a clone of the Edinburgh class. So if you want a captain trainer at tier 8 and you like the Edinburgh class, it's there for you. Black Frederick de Goober, so technically it does fit in good. But in my opinion, it fits better in niche because you have to like that class in the first place and then just want a better version of it. That's all it is. So yeah, if, if you like the Frederick de Goober, the black one's there and it's it's better. So Black Fushin. It's good. It's good. It's another copy of the same ship that we have like five different of in this game, but it gives it rapid reload and fuel smoke. So if you want that ship, but with those skills, it's a brand. It's a pretty fun ship. Black Gascon, Roma treatment of the gas can. Yes, it sits in good only because its turret layout and its armor kind of kills it for a lot of battleship players. So if you like the gas can already, this is just the straight up better version of it and it goes in great to buy, but for most players, it's going to sit in good, and I would, I would definitely suggest it. I have fun with it. Black Graf Zeppelin, it's the best version of the Graf Zeppelin. Rapid Reload 2, Secondary Overload is nuts. If people get close, it's basically a cruiser with a flight deck on it. You'll have fun. It's a great time, and you also can play a pretty aggressive carrier, which some people really enjoy that, actually having a carrier that does something on the team instead of going to the corner of the map. Black Iowa, so I previously had this at Playable. But I'm going to agree with a lot of other people. It definitely sits in good. It's a side grade to the main Iowa, but it just doesn't beat the Missouri, in my opinion, at its tier. So if you want to side grade Iowa for its skills and everything, it's there. It's there. It's good. Black Iron Duke. It wasn't playable. I'm going to move it up to good. It is a budget agent court. So if you want that or don't have the engine court and get access to the Black Iron Duke, it's a good ship. You'll enjoy it, especially with the HE, it still does send DDs packing back to port pretty quickly. 
Black Ishmael goes right up to Great to Buy. This is an incredibly strong, basically tier 6 Roma, as many people considered it. It's got a lot of firepower, great skills for its tier, handles most teams incredibly well, so take it out with Extreme Predator if it's on the enemy team, or if you get it, definitely enjoy yourself. Black Ismo, it wasn't playable, but I'm going to move it up to niche. If you like the Ismo class, this is clearly better. Precise aim, rapid reload is an incredibly strong combo in this game, and it has it. So if you like the Ismo, this is clearly a better version of it. Black Kamikaze, it's a Kamikaze, but it has smoke. So yeah, it's good. It's incredibly strong for its gear, hard hitting torps, incredibly fast torpedo boat. So if you are a DD main, maybe even borderline great to buy. But yeah, overall, I'd suggest it. Black Congo, it's unplayable. Congo is generally just an okay ship. The Black Congo doesn't really change it up, so it's unplayable. I borderline collectors, but at least it's somewhat usable. Black Leander, technically, fits a niche. It's a copy of the Leander class, just like the Black Edinburgh class, but it's not good, as good tier for tier. So if you like the Leander, you have a Captain Trainer Black Ship version of it now. Awesome, but else, it's just playable. Black Lexington, and from every single carrier main that I talked to about this, it goes right into collectors, and I'm just going to read their thought right here. This has nothing going for it for the tier. It's objectively bad and needs help. That That's a that's a great review there. <laughs> Black Monarch, so this is a regular Monarch with smoke and rapid reload. One instead, to me, it goes right into good. I enjoy the Monarch class. The Monarch class is great. It just I think everyone has a bad taste in their mouth from the Black Monarch because it came out in the shipyard for an outrageous 65 titanium for a tier 8. No, it's not that strong, but it is definitely solid and a great captain trainer for HMS battleships. Black Nagato, it is just playable. It's a Nagato class, which is great, but secondary overload for a ship that has bad secondaries. Yeah. Now, Black New Mexico, it is still a New Mexico, so it's playable, but there's a better New Mexico class. It's called the Arizona. Just just get that. And we got another one that I missed during the original recording, but the Black New Orleans, actually a pretty recent black ship that came in. It's good. The problem is it's overshadowed by its bigger, better radar brethren. This is a sonar version, and that is pretty good. I would, I still think it's a good, solid ship. Just radar is so much more powerful at tier 7 than sonar is. So if you don't have the Indianapolis and you want something like it, eh, the Black New Orleans is a good option. Black North Carolina. I'm going to put it in niche. Some people like it. I don't. I hated it. But yeah, it's a side grade to the North Carolina class, in my opinion. The Alabama exists, so it's that one's just clearly better than it. So actually, this one I didn't miss in the original, but I'm redoing it because it's just out of order and it's bothering me during the editing bay. So, um... <laughs> Black Shimikaze, it's basically going to niche, it's a one trick pony at tier 10, I don't know the exact change ups for the black version, but it's still going to be a Shimikaze, so a crap ton of torps, that one trick pony attitude, if they buff the guns a little bit, or any form of kind of trying to make it almost kind of like a semi hate you're going to be moving up into good definitely, but overall I'm just going to stick it in a niche for right now, and we'll see if I'm right or wrong, or which way it goes. Black Shukaku, now I have talked to a few carry mains that have this, and they generally say it's good. It's incredibly strong, once again, it's a Shukaku class, but the upgrades don't make it great to buy, so it's kind of in that good category. Black Talon, so the Talon class generally is already problematic, but I argue that it's actually playable, because it kind of gives it a niche. Now, of course, it is still a torpedo reload niche, but sometimes it actually weirdly works, so... I, I kind of enjoyed it, but it definitely is, is it's just playable. Black Texas, yeah, it's collectors. The Texas is already just kind of okay, and the black upgrades don't help it enough to escape out of just getting the battle honors done and pretty much viewing it in port. Black Yamato, so actually, I kind of was pretty much on point on this one. It's a good side grade to the Yamato. It's a fun time, but overall, it's not going to be considered better than the regular Yamato, but overall it's still a Yamato class, you really can't screw it up, and of course that skin for it is absolutely beautiful. We're finally on to the letter C. <laughs> oh, Jesus, oh, fun, let's get through this. Campbelltown Collectors, it's just a Campbelltown, it's not really a great tier 3, but you know, you get it for history pretty much. 
Canaria. So this is actually a newer ship that we got, but unfortunately its nickname is carrying my ass because it's an incredibly subpar cruiser. I would just stay away from it. It's not good. Champagne. So I would say great to buy. It's a fun time and get those Citadel missions done quick, but for most people, the lack of guns and also the turret layout, the bad armor and everything, it's, it just doesn't work for most players. But if you want a ship that gets those Citadel missions done quick, the Champagne Citadel's everything. It's insane. I enjoy it. Play it more like a cruiser and you'll pull a lot more firepower out of it than typically playing it as that battleship style since it just the armor doesn't hold up like other battleships of that tier. Cheshire, this was in Collectors. I'm going to move it to Niche. Some people have changed my mind. I was biased on this ship as it when it came out. It was a horrible event. But Ruler's Wave really showed that it is quite a capable ship in the right hands. So if you want the good AA, decent fire starting capabilities, smoke of a heavy cruiser uh, in tier 8, it's there for you. Whole Bear. So this is a cruiser for DD mains. This is an incredibly fast ship. I'd argue great to buy in the right hands, but overall I'd say niche just because of that. You do need to have the skills in order to dodge with this because it only takes one shot pretty much from a battleship to send this thing back to port. It's incredibly weak on armor, but its guns and its capabilities are deadly in the right hands. So if you are looking for a bit of a challenge in a gunboat DD main or even a light cruiser main, you're going to enjoy the Colbert. Constellation, as much as I actually thoroughly enjoy this ship for the skills, its guns, its torpedoes, its secondaries, it does really well. Unfortunately, the armor really holds it back and you have to be able to handle that bad armor and the massive ship that it is. But when you can use all those capabilities all together in a match, it's a very rewarding battleship to play or a light battleship, I should say. And it can be a lot of fun, but it's, it's not for everyone. Cossack. So this was originally in niche, but you have all taught me how wrong I was. So this is great to buy. This is the king of tier 8 DDs. It's got so many get out of jail free fuel smokes that it's incredibly forgiving as well. But also, hey, you want to go up and kill a DD? You have sonar to do it too. And just so many skills, so many capabilities. The guns are good. The torpedoes are pretty solid. It's nimble. It's fun. I, I would highly suggest this if you are a DD main. It's a great ship to pick up. Now to our first 40k ship, the Cross of Dorn. It is a good ship to pick up. It is an Odin with Rapid Reload DFA and a unique APHE pen damage buff. It's a fun ship and actually probably I'd say one of the best 40k ships of them all, but it's just it can handle its own interior and it's a lot of fun. So if you are looking for that style and that aesthetic of a ship, Cross of Dorn is right there for you. So actually, while editing, I got my hands on the Dalian. Uh, it's going to go right into niche, and only because its HP and lack of AA really prevent it from really going forward. It's going to get just destroyed out of existence by CVs and or even good battleships in the game. But if you can play that sneaky cruiser that can hunt down DDs when you don't have any skills to hunt those DDs down, you've got good guns and a crap ton of torpedoes. So if you enjoy that, it'd be good for you, but else I'd probably stay away. De Grasse, so this is playable. It's an AA spec Lagassonier. I wouldn't change out the Lagassonier for that because tier 6 AA sucks already. So even if you buff it just a little bit, it, it doesn't fix the ship. So yeah, it's, it's there. The Seven Provinces. Oh, yes, we all remember the Scourge of this thing because it is great to buy and super annoying to play against. It's It takes a bit of skill to make it work. But those three airstrikes and those 360 guns, the maneuverability, the radar, the speed of it, the AA of it, yeah, it's an incredible combo. You know, you could argue probably good because that skill is needed, but with those three airstrikes and how fast they reload, it is incredibly potent even in non-skilled hands. So definitely great to buy and uh, just remember to wash your hands after playing it because you will feel a little dirty at times on how many fires and how many bombs you hit. Dreadnought, it's a collector ship. It's just a, it's rough for its tier, but then again, that entire tier for battleships is rough in general. So yeah, it's there if you want it. Duca de Osta, it's a good ship. You actually do have a pre-nerf sap on it still, so that's incredibly strong. It's AP strong, its torps are strong. It is a light cruiser, so you will get kind of blapped at times at that tier, but it is still maneuverable enough to dodge everything. And plus, you do have sonar, so you can hunt those DDs down in their smoke and just hit them with that beautiful sap you have. All right, let's see if I don't slaughter this too much. Duca de la Brizzi. 
Clayton. It goes right into good. It's an incredibly forgiving Italian cruiser because it has HE instead of SAP. Yeah, you lose out on that SAP power, but now you can start fires with the incredible range this ship has. It's a great Italian cruiser if you want one, and also one that has HE, so a little benefit to it. Duke York. Fine. Fine. I get it. The very few of you that actually enjoy the ship, it's not collectors, it's playable. It is still a King George V class, which sucks. The smoke kind of helps, but there are so many other better tier 7 HMS battleships to get. Even the hood is clearly better than this ship. Just just stay away. This thing barely, barely ekes out of collectors. Just understand that. Dunker, so this is a tier 6 Richie. It's strong for its tier but it's not the best of its gear. If you want that style of play, it's there for you. It's a fun time, but it is kind of showing its age. I don't know if anyone else has kind of noticed. It's not, it doesn't feel as good, if you want to say. But at the same time, I still think it's a good ship, but it might need a little bit of refreshing soon, Wargaming. On to E, we have the Enterprise. The carry mains told me, great to buy. It's an incredibly solid ship. It's got good bombers, great fighters, good fire chance. It's one of the best in tier 8 and super annoying to play against. So if you know what you're doing, it'll treat you well. Eric Loneheart, this is a good carrier for tier 6. Tier 6 tends to not be a very stressful tier as well. So this is pretty much a cruiser with a flight deck, no fighters, but decent bombers and decent torpedo bombers. So if you want to have an easy to play carrier, I would definitely pick this up, and also you can once again play more aggressive than most carriers due to its armor and its guns. With the Exeter, it goes right into playable. Unfortunately, its size is what really kills it. Its guns are actually pretty good, torpedoes are good, smoke is good, but it sits so high up off the water, it's incredibly easy to hit for that tier, and just gets smoked by so many other ships on that tier. So I really wouldn't suggest it, but you'll probably just acquire it sometime, and it'll you get the battle honors done on it. Ben Yang, this goes right into niche. It's not a bad ship. I actually played it and had a bit of fun with it, even with the deep water torpedoes. But those Akazuki guns on it absolutely are killer. But their accuracy is really good. It's the arcs you have to get used to. Once you get used to the arcs, you can be landing a lot of hits with this ship. It can be a lot of fun. But also, this would be a great Pan Asian commander trainer. So if you need that, it's there. But overall, not for everyone. So I kind of did the Flandre Dirty last year, I put it in playable, and boy was I wrong. No, it's good. It's just a solid tier 8 French battleship. It's got good guns, good secondaries, actually pretty decent armor. It does everything you want out of a battleship, and if you're really looking for something bland and basic, the Flandre is there for you. So it's, it's just solid. So it's not a master or none situation, but it's a jack of all trades for the battleships at that tier. It will handle about everything it's not in great to buy just because it's a competitive tier for battleships so yeah it's it's just good just good on to another new ship we have the flint so a lot of people would think it's an atlantic class with different skills it would go into niche but in my opinion those skills bring it barely better and barely into good i prefer the atlanta over it but that's just me, the general community consensus is that the Flint is good and from what I've gotten. So I'd like to know in the comments what's your opinion, Flint versus Atlanta. Just love to know. I'd say it definitely sits in good, but barely good. Now with the Florida, this is your basic, basic battleship. It's just good. It's got a lot of guns, decent armor. It kind of competes, depending on who you talk to, as one of the better tier 7 battleships. But in my opinion... It doesn't eke out that win on it, but if you get it, you'll have fun with it because just use the amount of guns at medium range. The thing, this thing can hurt. This thing can definitely hurt. Now, I don't really think I need to explain this ship, but the Friesland. It's great to buy. This is an annoying scourge at tier 9, but it is so much fun to play. The just fast firing guns, the great AA, the smoke, the sonar, the fire starting capabilities, the AP chunking of other DDs, the nimbleness of it it is a fantastic ship and i would highly suggest picking it up but uh no you're sometimes you're not going to feel so great after a game because you'll just be like that was dirty